in this meeting at 10.04 for uh, Sheriff and Dispatch Subcommittee. Um, hopefully this will be our last meeting before the delegation meeting on Monday. Jason Henry, one, right? Assistant Superintendent. Gene, we have a delegation meeting Monday, right? 17th. Kathy said this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'd ask the sheriff um, to get me some information on cruisers because th that was kind of a sticking point um, for the subcommittee on two new cruisers being ordered. And uh, I was looking for uh, information about the sheriffs taking home their cruisers each and every time. Uh, we have 14 cruisers. Um, is that correct? Yes. Two of you probably are going to retire or you're going to use as a spare or you're to replace the two new ones that you want to order. Is that correct? Yeah, we probably would rotate out the spare to a north spare um, and then sell two as county property um, as we've done in the past to generate revenue. Okay. The mileage on your cruisers, I mean, the two that you're going to, say, retire or give a one you're going to sell and one you're going to keep, the mileage on those are? Uh, one, I think, is about 120,000, and the other one is uh, at about uh, 100, 105,000. Okay. And, and actually, they, excuse me, this won't happen until the fall <coughs> if we purchase the new one. That's when they would come in. So. Okay. It'll be over. It'll be over that. So is the average um, mileage on all your cruises, are they high or are they, you know, I, I, I mean, what do you think you average a year on mileage when you... Probably about, on the, most of the work in deputies, about 25,000. That's what I, that's what I put on my car every yeah. year. I even put more than that. We can give you some civil papers you can help us out. Yeah. <laughs> With my students? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then I had asked you about information about uh, your deputies. Um, I didn't get that. I mean, I, I was curious about where your deputies live. Do you have a lot of deputies in one area? I mean, and I, the point I'm trying to get at is, do if you have deputies in, like, four deputies in Ossipee or three deputies in Ossipee, is there uh, a reason why they can't share a cruiser? Yes. Yeah, the simple reason is um, most of the time they're working together. So, um, like I had told the commissioner, um, on Tuesdays there is no deputy off duty. Uh, there's two working nights and everybody else is scheduled on some type of day shift. There's two 10 to 6 cars and the others are seven to three or eight to four so unless we had six or seven deputies standing around in the office because they don't have a cruiser to use because they're sharing cruises that's one reason the other days during the week there's only two deputies scheduled off and there's two there's always two on it at night at 10 to 6 at uh, 3 to 11. So you don't have anybody cruising on the the night the midnight overnight. ship. No, overnight. we're not overnight. If you could give us six more deputies, we could go 24 hours, and that would relieve this whole issue. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think that will happen. <laughs> the um, when you say you have all your deputies working, are they doing transports? Are they doing uh, civil matters? I mean, they're, are they? I mean, when they're yep. What are they doing on Tuesdays, <laughs> all of well, them? <laughs> their priority is civil process. Yeah. Um, we're the only ones in the state that can do it. Right. So that is an endless flow of uh, mail mm -hmm. coming in and out. Um, they're all assigned to areas for that process. We try and assign them to an area that is um, at least somewhat compatible to where they live. Unfortunately, over the years, the um, residents of the deputies has kind of turned over. Mm -hmm. It used to be stronger in the north um, when I was working the road. Um, there were several of us from the Conway area. It has now shifted towards the Wakefield 
area. Um, where we recently hired two of Wakefield officers as deputies. So they don't do both. They do so there's right, no, yeah. no, they're deputies. Mm -hmm. Um but they lived down there when we took them, so that's mm -hmm. where they remain. Mm -hmm. Um and there's another deputy that we had that lives in the Wakefield Milton area. So you have three in the Wakefield area. You have one in Wolfboro, two um, two in Wolfboro, I'm sorry. Two in Moultonboro to include the chief deputy. Mm -hmm. um, Osby has two, I believe. Or three, actually, I'm sorry, in Osby. Okay. And then there's three of us in Conway, which includes the lieutenant, myself, and uh, Deputy Pearlie. And that? Does it? It's 13. Right. 13. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I get twelve. You said. I get oh, six. Oh, two, two in Wolfboro. You said. Yeah. Thirteen. Three in three in uh, Wolf. Wait. Three in Wolfboro. Two in Moultonboro. No, two in Wolfboro. Two in Moultonboro. Three in Wakefield. Three in Ossipee, and three in Conway. Conway. So only on Tuesday, everybody's on duty all together. Yep. All of your sheriffs are out on Tuesday. And the other Monday six, through Friday, yep. there's two scheduled off. Um, and the rest are either scheduled, the two deputies on night, and the others are on the multiple day shift, um, either 10 to 6 or mm -hmm. the day. Why is Tuesday the big day? Uh, Did it's you usually that? a heavier transport day for the um, court, uh, mainly the northern court area. Is that from jail to court? Is that how that? That happens? could be from anywhere. From anywhere. Yeah, um, we're responsible to pick them up at the prison if they need to come to this court. Um, we. Um, a lot of times of picking them up from outside the county, from different counties, um, either going all the way to the county jail or uh, relaying them with the other county uh, departments. Uh, we meet Coas County a lot at Dairy Queen um, in Bartlett mm -hmm. to shuttle people back and forth for each of us. Um, so we are traveling all around the state for prisoners to bring to courts. Um, and obviously from this jail here to bring to the two courts or um, for other reasons as far as we do some medical and some um, transfers. When you, when you say you travel all over the state, you, then you, you said you met you meet COAS sheriff. Whenever we can. Whenever you can. Do you do that in other counties? Yes, all the counties. Always. Um, try and help out each other because they know it's uh, a long way from here to there for everyone. Okay. You guys jump in anytime you want. I, mean, I know I have a lot of questions in my head. I, when I drove in, you have two brand new cars unmarked. Are those yours, or is that? Yep, yeah, it's mine. Um, the one of the detectives just got a recently a, was a new cruiser last year um, because his he came out of service. Um, and the third one is the lieutenant, is what you're looking at. That's up. Okay. And then the ones in the back are one spare. Is one's spare a spare. Is one. That's it. One. And then there's, um, I believe, um, two detectives right now in house, um, obviously doing some paperwork from yesterday's mm -hmm. activity. And there's two deputies in house. Um, Right now, returning paperwork, picking up paperwork, uh, maybe doing a report. So that's usually what they come in to the office for. Okay. Do you have any questions? I, I'm working on it. Okay. And right now, the cruises seem to rotate out four, four and a half years mm -hmm. um, when they're up around that mileage, 120 or you know, possibly more. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to read the, all this information you gave us. Um, I, think, I think we're 
I was coming from was you have deputies on call, just like local departments have deputy, or they they put one or two people on call 24-7, say, in case there's something going on. And they, they would be the ones specifically that you would call out. Understandably, they would have a cruiser at home because uh, they would need that. But your other deputies are taking their cruisers home but aren't on call at all. Mm -hmm. And they're, well, I mean, you have, I mean, I, I understand I, I, your, your hesitation on answering that or, or making a comment, but the fact is you have state police who has, I think, two or three uh, troopers 24-7. I mean, they have their night troopers, so that they're covering the county. Granted, it's a huge county to cover, but most likely your deputies wouldn't be called out for uh, a fatal accident on 16 in Ossipee when state police has coverage on that and they're, they're going to respond. Not true. Not true. We have been called out for fatal accidents. Um, Is it your person if, who's on call if, that would be called out? Um, at least, and then probably one of the detectives would uh, go out on that call also. Um, and if they've changed, unless they've changed, the last I knew, state police, when they're on that night shift, the old night shift, mm -hmm. had some responsibility to Belknap County also. So it wasn't one troopers. Right, it wasn't just Carroll County, mm -hmm. two troopers. One of those troopers, um, primary was to Belknap County. So now you're talking a lot, much larger area for two troopers per se. Um, two troopers in Carroll County, one holding off over in Belknap County right. for, for coverage, right. So there's a lot of times where that trooper will get caught up into whatever call. Now there is no person to call out for the troops as far as Carroll County. Um, so we a lot of times will get calls mm -hmm. um, and we are the only ones that can do the IEA transports which is a lot of our call out um, from the hospitals to Concord. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the primary reason that they're on call. Um, but you don't have all of your all 13 nope. deputies or 12 deputies not counting you. I mean you're on call I know probably all the time. But all your deputies aren't on call 24-7. Technically, they are. Um, but you have designated, two, two, right? Two night cars going off duty are on call for four hours per contract. No. Um, the whole day shift is on that same call four hours prior to their shift. Okay. So at three o'clock is the hour. The shift, all the call shift becomes the whole day shift. And that will be geographically where the call is, they will reach out to that closest deputy um, that is coming on duty at 7 o'clock. So your, your, your day shift consists of, not on a Tuesday, but on a regular other day, consists of four sheriffs on duty, five sheriffs? At least uh, four, yes. Okay. Yeah. So they're on their day shift, and then you say they're still on call four hours after their shift is over. Technically, yeah. Technically. Contract. And then your other shift comes comes on for the late afternoon going into the evening. Okay. So that, uh, is that another four deputies for that, for the evening shift? Evening shift is only two. Only two. So if there's a, a big deal going on, like a fatal or something like that, and your four day people, or maybe they'll go into that four hours for overtime, Am I, is that correct? Yep. And, and then the the carryover, your night, your app, well, late afternoon, or, you know, the, the second shift, let me say it that way, <clears throat> is also coverings. So technically, you have six people working. Possibly, yes. Possibly, if it's if yep. there's a huge, yep. you know, something huge going on. Much like any other department in the state, um, right, is going to do that. Right, they're not going to just leave. Oh, we're off oh, oh, no, I understand that. I um, understand that. You do what you have to do to get through it, obviously, um, and then worry about the pay and picking up, clean up later on. Right, I, I understand that. I'm just trying to 
much like yesterday. I mean, we, we supplied every deputy that we could um, without pulling off duty deputies. Um, and as you saw, most of the town supplied, or a couple of the towns mm -hmm. supplied a couple officers. The corrections even um, supplied um, some transport assistance with that roundup from yesterday. So um, those type of incidents, you, you can't prepare for that mm -hmm. um, in our level. We're here to help whenever, wherever right. we can. Um, and I, th I think if we look to taking cruises away, let alone parking them here, um, if we diminish the fleet at all, I think we're really hampering into the assistance that we'd be able to give these other departments, uh, at the very least, let alone shorthand ourselves at times. I think it's cost effective the way it is right now is, is better for the county. Um, you're getting a much better product. You're, each person is treating their vehicle as their own vehicle. Um, the maintenance on it is much far less than sharing a cruiser. Um, I'm sure we can talk to the town of Conway, um, how their cruisers um, probably have much more uh, maintenance to theirs with three, di three different drivers in one day. Um, their town takes care of the cruisers, so it may offset it a little bit, but is it a mechanic that um, if the liability something happens, who knows? Mate, who maintains your our cruisers? Ours is throughout, uh, we share the wealth throughout the county at um, different uh, maintenance. Northern Ties, um, one of them, Crowell's and Wakefield, and McDonald Motors, where we've purchased the last several vehicles. That's the three major we have gone to other. Madam Chair? Yes, question. Um, each week when I sign these bills, or sign the checks, um, at the beginning I went down to see Dom almost every week. We. We have a, a an ex uh, I won't say it's excessive, but we have a high rate of cost for maintenance of these vehicles. And I, I understand why we have to do it, but we should be looking at some kind of a program where the deputies go to the same place for the same you know, for tires. They go to the same place. Are we working on the government program, the state purchasing for tires? Yep. Are you sure of that? Yep. Um, it, it's something we, the subcommittee ought to look at. Because it's those, those are the three major, but then there's, every once in a while, one shows up for Wolfboro. Um, Not in my talk. Well, maybe that was a leftover bill from the, yeah, from the previous one, right, because there was. But those are the three major ones. Northern gives us well, I, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Um, and we did have a rash of um, some vehicles going in for blend door problems on the old Crown Vicks, um, which we're almost uh, rotating out in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a $500 repair for each cruiser. Um, and we've had four of them almost, or three, and actually the one that the jail took over had the same thing once they got it. Um, so that's a $500 repair that's unseen mm -hmm. um, because you have to remove the whole dashboard to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, so those things happen, and then we actually, <coughs> during, we, fixed a steering problem with the uh, steering shaft on one cruiser. And then after that was repaired, Ford Motor came out with a recall. So they kindly reimbursed that mm -hmm. and have since fixed all of the um, old Crown Vicks. Okay. If we, if we look at your budget and say where could you cut more? I mean, if it's not in cruisers, because you're obviously passionate about having everybody having their own cruiser, is there anywhere that you feel you could be flexible in this budget? 
No. Um, again, I mean, since the year I've been here, um, we, we went through last budget that um, was semi-prepared by the previous sheriff mm -hmm. um, and skimmed through that and cut wherever we could. We again did that this year, cut wherever we could. Um, the new equipment lines, we accounted for what we're trying to purchase on those new equipment items uh, between software and hardware and um, cruiser equipment, radios. So, do you have a list of the new equipment? Do you have a list? Uh, the equipment? Yeah, I think I did I'll find it. No, that's all right. Pile of stuff that you do. Um, and some of that new equipment is actually on. No, I have a list of subscriptions. Also. I don't think you gave me a list of new equipment. I think I mentioned them already. Yeah, you gave me your cell phone list and, um, and your subscription. Remember, you, Gene, you were looking for subscriptions, but those were. But I don't think you gave me a, a new equipment list. I'm sure if I listen to tape, it was, it's probably in there. I have a question, uh, a little off the vehicle topic. Tell us about the dog. Yeah, which one? <laughs> we have two. Right, we had one before, and now apparently we have two. Yep. Um, we weren't aware that the one that we've had for going on its 10th year, basically, um, is has cancer. Um, so back in Feb January, it was diagnosed and was given three weeks to live without medication. The medication has a cost, obviously. Uh, the hospitals have worked with us to cut that cost drastically down to something manageable. Um, he has had three, one per month is when he gets his medication for that. Um, and that has no cost to the county. That has been going on through donations mm -hmm. that have come in since. The prognosis during medication is four to six months on the average. Um, a survey of 60 dogs with this type of cancer, not one of them have made a year. So we have, um, through the blessing of the commissioners with the support to continue the canine program, we're able to receive a canine from work and dog program uh, for no cost. A grant through them. Through, we, I'm sorry, through, through the canine um, working dog program. Dogs. Working dog foundation mm -hmm. is what it is. Mm -hmm. Out of Portsmouth. Uh, we received that dog last month. That's a one year old German Shepherd and has begun training with a different deputy. How's that going to affect the vehicle? Right now, we're just using that. Um, Edge, who is the current active one, certified one, um, is still in with Corporal Pearl. He's still working. He basically can work up until he passes if that is the case, if we have to go that way. Um, still wanting to work, still seems okay with the medication. The other dog is just um, in a crate, which is sufficient um, to go back and forth to Portsmouth for training each Monday, um, and he's basically only bonding with the handler at this point. He's not I thought it was used a female. I thought it was or she is, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't even know they used females. Yeah. Who hasn't been fixed? Right, she will be. She better be. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have every dog in the county. <laughs> is the vehicle one of the ones that's being replaced? It is. So, so we have switched the the new handler was in um, one of the older Crown Vets. We have switched him into, used to be the Chief Deputy's um, Expedition, which is the same vehicle that Corporal Pearlie has with her canine. Right. When we take Edge out of service, uh, we will remove the equipment from that vehicle that's leaving, put it into this expedition. It is transferable. So okay. 
That includes the air conditioning unit and other floor cams. Yes. How's, I mean, I don't know, this, we get going, we did away with this program some years ago and said we're not going to do it anymore. And all of a sudden now, all of a sudden here we go again. And what, how about, I mean, there was a court case, that's why we stopped. I don't know what the status of it is. It said that we, the county or whoever, the departments are responsible to pay overtime for the person taking care of the dog. Yep. So how are we handling that? Yep. Are we paying that? No. Um, the, the federal law requires a compensation as far as off-duty time um, for care of the dog, to basically feed it and whatever you do, walk it for a certain period of time. Um, the second canine handler right now is basically just coming in a half hour late or going a half hour home earlier, um, which is what OSPE does. Um, um, basically, Moulton Borough is a much higher pay rate because that's what they've agreed to. Um, Deputy Pearlie gets what the contract says um, at $4 um, for one hour, seven days a week. That's her compensation to basically take care of that dog, which is probably below the um, what a lot of other departments do, but that's that's what is so she is twenty eight dollars a week, right? But my point is, is that acceptable? Yes. Well, as long as it, well, as long as the units agree to it. Um, we have quite a few dogs in the county. Yeah. Well, I mean, as I stated before, Wolfboro has recently um, disbanded theirs. Mm -hmm. um, they say they're going to get the new one back up and running. Multiple boroughs is at the age of yeah. what edge is. Um, Freedom um, has one and OSPE has one. State Police has three. They're going to have three. Around the in state, state Troopy, uh, or? in Carroll County. Troopy. No, Troopy, I, I, I just talked to somebody. Okay, well, that's new news. Um, mm -hmm. They're getting, a, I think again, they have two, and I think they're getting another one. And again, I don't think they're locked into Cal County when you say state. They could get called out to anywhere in the well, state. Well, they do go right. all over the state, but they're stationed in True Right. Oh, I have a question. Yes. How often do you use the dog? It's mm -hmm. available every day. Um, it's used 14 times uh, last year as far as to search schools, assist uh, other towns with searching schools. The working dog program uses all their dogs they train um, to search schools as far as lockers and areas that they need to. Um, that program is so that not one dog is doing a whole school, which obviously they tire out after a couple hours. Uh, so they may get four or five dogs to work together on that particular day. Yeah, you can only, you can only work with this one. She was used yesterday, obviously, with the um, activity that went on yesterday. Um, that was the first big drug thing this year. Um, the dog will, the newer dog will be trained the same effects, basically. Search um, for persons or articles and uh, drug detection. But you didn't have the dog before? Yeah. And you needed to do this kind of a search, what happened, what did you do? Usually had to wait, um, back then, if we didn't have a dog, was most of the time a state police, you had to wait or to see if there was one available, which back then was a couple hours away, mm -hmm. at least. Um, so, and again, that's a hit or miss when you call the state, it may be one right around the corner or not, or not tied up either. Um, OSP, it's one person. He has a 40 hour week. Um, he's either on duty or not. Um, so I'm not sure how far they will call out their person if we need him up in the house location. Can I ask one more question? Sure. So, what's your total cost the for in the coming year for the dog? $1,500, I think, is the budget one. Okay. Which is 2500 
I have 1,500. I have 1,500. Oh, oh, you can give me some. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the line underneath it, Commissioner. Okay. You're right, it's 1510. 15, 15, 18, 18, yeah. yeah. You're right. It didn't quite catch the frequency that. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's it's available, which is the biggest thing, um, at any given time. She is subject to call out um, as long as she's not on vacation. Does that, that $1,500 include the thousand something dollars no that is um in wages so that's up above and how much is the second person getting paid right now it is a compensation of time as i stated once we take corporal pearly out of the uh, canine unit then he will receive what the um she was receiving the same 28 dollars a week Sure. I still, I'm going to hold you to the fire on this one. I, I'm not getting any clear idea. Can you give me how many times a year you use the dog or a month or? I mean, there were, when I was asked, I pulled up 14 calls from last year. Okay. So about once a month. Yeah. At least. And then he has also... With Corporal Pearly with Edge, he has also hit on when she's serving papers, mm -hmm. marijuana residue, which has led into um, Is that crimes. Uh, uh, if, if I may, you're familiar with the Supreme Court case that happened recently with Aldo the Wonder Dog in Miami Dade County. That's exactly what they were doing, and it ended up in the Supreme Court, and the Sheriff's Department lost. They're, you're not allowed to do that. You can't go up to the porch and for well, some of them. He's hitting from the car. So you I need to take a look at the case. We don't, we don't want to end up having a Supreme oh. Court case in yeah, Carroll yeah. County. He, the dog was in there for two different purposes. I mean, there were two different cases. One was a car stop, a vehicle stop, and that, that the Supreme Court said that's perfectly fine. But the second one was they were serving papers to somebody. The dog alerted. They arrested, it was a marijuana grow, and the Supreme Court threw it out because it is in the curtilage, yep. even if you're in the driveway. So I'm not trying to tell you your yep. job, no, but I, you. it's, yep. it's, I, I really don't want to have a yep. barely expensive a Supreme Court case. Or, no, we're looking at that. It'd be interesting to know if they actually had the dog at the door or if it was in the car. Right. Um, it's Aldo the Wonder Dog. <laughs> Wonder Dog, that's what Aldo. they call him. And it was in Miami. They're also trained for attack work, right? They're not just no. Trained. They're not. No, our dogs are not trained for bite work. Oh, that's why you get a female. No, I mean Edge was a male. He was not trained for bite work. No, but I mean a female usually. Is, I mean they're aggressive in other ways, but not usually for bite work. But right. yeah, we have. Well, I thought you were. Really I thought no you'd use them to, for that. Huh? No interest to do bite work. Hmm. That's interesting. Pretty reliability. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So yes. uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Are we no, go ahead. Done on dogs. Are we done on dogs. I'm uh, done on dogs. <laughs> uh, what towns are you providing service to? Uh, you know, like every town. Well, for a uh, purpose, I guess. No, but where are you, are you? Do you have any dedicated places that you go? I mean, like no, the Mount only Eaton, or Freedom, oh, or Effingham. I don't know what no, places don't. No, do you, places you, that don't have departments, yeah. Albany, etc. Right. The only the only dedication uh, we have is Albany. Per se dedication, but they do supply us with a amount of money that they vote for every year in their budget uh, for um, coverage. Dedicated coverage, basically. Right. Where does that set off? That's, that's under their uh, grants, I think. All my contracts. Like, right. like 20,000. $20, Special calls. details, yeah. And they pay that at a detailed rate. So that's over and above any hours that deputies work. And you revisit that all the time to make sure it's substantial. I mean, it's. I mean, you, do you look at the call volume for Albany and then yeah, no, come we, up with the amount? Is that what you do? with the mm -hmm. um, Albany selectmen. Mm -hmm to see if they want to uh, increase or decrease that amount. Um, and they pretty much provide the amount. And then we tell them, okay, this is what it costs per, it's been four hour shifts basically. 
So they just patrol Albany. Stay right in Albany. They stay right in Albany. Yep. So what is that? Uh, what's that's the only. Dedicated. Well, what's he doing the rest of the time? I don't know. It's a paid well, outside it's a detail. Paid, it's just like working oh, for PSNH. Oh, it's an extra shift. Yeah, yes. It's a detail. Commercial. It's not commercial, but it's So a he's not on regular duty. He's on extra duty. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's over and above there, 40 yeah. hours. And that's all but his choice to have us do that. Mm -hmm. So the 23000 that they give us for 20, that. 20. 20. 20. 20. Well, it's 23 here, but it's something. That's my conclusion. Yeah. Yeah covers your um, cruiser, covers your gas, and covers all of that stuff. You, I mean, that you calculated that, so it's it's yes. reasonable. Yeah. Okay. It, it covers the pay as well. Yes. Thank you. It basically, uh, yeah, it's commercial rate. So four hours every day? No, no. No, again, that 20000 is divided out through all, the whole year, and it's usually two or three times a week. Is all it is. So, it's not four, so it's two not or three, a day. okay, two or three times a week you just patrol Albany. What happens to the other days? No, that's that's over and above. Just regular patrol. Yeah. The other days we're out serving papers, out yeah. doing transports, yeah. out doing yes. whatever. We still respond to their calls, but they're looking for a dedicated visibility, go to Golden uh, Oaks, deterrent. drive around, a deterrent, yeah. radar, all that kind of stuff that they were uh, getting from us. Just twice a week. It's, it's proactive versus reactive. Let's oh, I understand that. that. I, I know. I'm just trying to... Two or three times a week is what it... Yeah. Uh, it's their choice. I understand. <laughs> like Brookfield <laughs> is... subs out Wakefield. Mm -hmm. But that's total coverage, 40 hours a week. They built that into their budget. Um, and I'm sure it's more than $20,000. Oh, it is. <laughs> It's actually more than it would cost them to have their own department wow. per capita. So that's that's the only other comparison in the county that does something like that. So we still have we still do not have uh, an amount for salaries. Union still in negotiations. Yeah, it's very close to reaching a, an agreement. Um, Will we have that figure at some point? I would. We're hoping to have that by your next. Monday meeting. Oh, good. Okay. And then you up. And the grant, still, still any word? Yeah. Yeah. No word at all. The only meeting I know they've had last week was a open to the public type meeting just to have public input. Did you go to that? No, no, we're tied up here. Oh. When they asked for public input, was that to? Encourage them to give uh, the money to the to a certain. I mean, did no, no, I, I believe it was just to cover their. Yeah, just to go over stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. maybe the ninety-one eighty type of thing. I'm gonna just jump really quick because I I asked the um, the jail to come and talk about the four thousand dollars that you wanted for equipment, right, for a cruiser. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can you just tell, give us a little? Information about that. Sure. <laughs> what it boils down to, ma'am, uh, actually, with all the, what we expended last year, we expended almost eight thousand dollars in either re fuel for the cars or vehicle repair. Mm -hmm. um, what we're asking for um, in this year's budget, specifically for um, emergency lights, basically boils down to about twenty-three hundred dollars in cost. For seven hundred and seventy-five dollars per car. We have three cars. Uh, this would allow us to outfit unmarked um, emergency lights for the um, use of in the emergency situations. Um, in that packet, you'll see the, the statutes that we've outlined. Uh, mm -hmm. The recent statute that was passed last year, and the the two policies that we have enacted um, already. It talks about our like our like our cars will have lights and things of that nature in them. Uh, so that's basically what, it, what we're boiling down to. Okay. I would say it's 
support of that as far as the lights needed it would cover the new law of August uh, that is uh, he may have them but if he is um, following an ambulance with a prisoner in it um, it obviously cuts down any liability to the county as far as if something happens we've had, had we've recently had a couple of occasions where we've transported some uh, offenders out to the hospital and we've mm -hmm. had to chase an ambulance recently we had to chase an ambulance from Wolfboro down to Dover so you can imagine driving from Wolfboro to Dover um, and not having any type of emergency lighting and trying to stay in close contact with the ambulance going that far um, can raise some concerns So you wouldn't use you wouldn't use one of the sheriff's vehicles because no. you have to use your own, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> okay. You've got car vehicles already. Correct. And they don't have any lights in them. Is Correct. That, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think that I think our, our question when the delegation was why you have to have lights per se and the sheriff wouldn't be you wouldn't be using maybe the sheriff's vehicle for those kind of situations i think that was maybe the, where the question was okay so, yeah no we, we have we want you to have blue lights i mean you know that's not we we're just wondering why you had to equip your cars yeah because maybe we don't have them our presently yeah. So on your budget line, um, not that that's my committee, but it's not, was it, I, I written down four thousand dollars. Is that what you had to put? We, we submitted the vehicle expense line is fourteen thousand dollars total, mm -hmm. and, a, and a portion of that, yes, yeah, so was four. about four for the lights. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions for? I don't think that's a problem. Do you, do you have one? The only question is, how does this pertain to the sheriff's budget? Yeah. The um, chairman of the delegation wanted us to talk to them about that because I think they were concerned that the sheriff should be maybe using their cruisers or their blue lights. I see. Um, so it was um, that was just a confusion on I think what you did or didn't have mm -hmm. for equipment and why you would need it. Um, mm -hmm. I actually forgot about that bill, but now I remember it um, about the blue lights. So I don't, I don't think we have any more questions. Do anybody else have any questions? I mean, you, if you want to go back to work, <laughs> you're <laughs> comfortable, and you get, there is no question as far as the, the vehicle equipment line from. I, I don't know. From the members here, no. Commissioner. What's that? This is your budget. Oh, I just thought we might have a question. No, we listened to it. Thank you. I appreciate your acknowledging that. <laughs> Pardon me? I appreciate your acknowledging. I guess I'd ask the subcommittee, are there any other concerns or any other questions that you want to ask? I want to really wrap it up so that I can give a report on Monday, a delegation meeting, and say yay or nay, or if there are concerns where we need the delegation to question anything or... Uh, if um, I missed the last meeting, <coughs> was there a direction for us to cut? Well, there wasn't a direction. I think that we were just trying. I, when I looked at, when I was going through the whole budget, and I, I understand that some of them are uncontrolled, um, uh, you know, like health insurance and retirement. But when I was looking from looking at actuals to um, the budget submitted. <coughs> It was almost about, it was 90 something thousand dollars for both. You know, I'm just, I'm not giving the exact total for sheriff and dispatch. And about, how would you say sheriff, about 40,000 of that is uncontrolled with the retirement and the um, insurance. Yeah, no, it sounds about right. I hadn't taken it down that much to um, decipher what. Well, I did all that, you know, I, yeah. Well, I think when I, when I did the figures, I think it was close to that. Yeah. So I, th you know, I was I was just concerned about the cruisers because you know I've I've heard talk that why do they get to each have a cruiser? Why can't they share a cruiser like local departments do? Um, if you have de deputies in certain areas together, why can't they share a car instead of 
us purchasing 14 or how many vehicles that we have and we you know and I know we keep rotating because that's the safe thing to do it's, a, it's the right thing to do is not to keep an old car out there but I think the concern was is it necessary one of the big things that hasn't been addressed to my knowledge and maybe you've just brushed over <laughs> is I think one time I think one thing is that you're focusing in on agencies like a Wolfboro and a Conway and a Multimer that have 24 hour coverage as opposed to call out Mm -hmm. And you're talking about them, Conway, trying to watch how many cruises they buy. Let's say it's 20. They try to keep that cost down to their commissioners because they know they have to answer for prices as well. But the point is is that a, an officer will do a day shift, a night shift, and a midnight shift with that one car. And it'll rotate around and around. But towns like, smaller towns like Freedom and Sandwich and the Sheriff's Office that aren't 24 hours, it's based on wear and tear and the emergency call out or non emergency call out. And, and I, maybe that's, it, maybe everyone gets that, but that's where the big divide is as to why Conway doesn't have take home cruises. Because they have 24 hour coverage where guys are coming in. We don't have 24 hour coverage, but yet we're still on call 24 hours a day. There are two troopers in Carroll County Troop B's area on a midnight shift if he's not on vacation, if he's not sick. If, if there's a Golden Oaks, let's just say Golden Oaks again, in Albany. There's a domestic there, and there are two troopers in the Troop B area. One trooper doesn't just stay on Route 16 looking for a motor vehicle stop. He backs up his other trooper. Mm -hmm. Now you have two troopers tied up in Golden Oaks on domestic. Now we get an alarm in Chatham. So who do you, and I'm not being wise, the wise guy, and I want this to sound sarcastic, but who do you think goes and covers that when the state police might arguably be tied up? Your person on call. Our person on call. Right. Who has his cruiser because he's on call? Exactly. Right. That's, that's my whole point. But I guess. Well, I, I, but I, I, what I'm saying is, you've got six other sheriffs that sh deputies that aren't on call, so their cruisers are, are just at home. It, right. The dispatcher will call supervisor, and the supervisor can say, "Okay, where's the alarm? It's in Chatham. Okay, send Corporal Purley. Where's the alarm? Oh, it's in Tamworth. Okay, send." you know, Deputy Bedley, that kind of, they, they look around too, geographically. Well, then is everybody on call? No, that's why I'm, no, that's no, it. No, there's no. two on call. No. You know what I'm saying? I but know. that yeah. sounds like that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. right? No, there's two on call, depending on what hour mm -hmm. the, of the night. Like I said, up until 3 o'clock, the two night cars are the primary call. -out. There's always one detective on call also, uh, much like every town in the county has detectives, usually one of them are on call to include Conway. So I guess um, my question then would be, um, if we did, if we went to the model that you were proposing or looking well, on, yeah. thinking about, yeah. how much money would we save? I haven't looked into that. I don't think, um, if any, very little. Um, obviously, if you're saying cut six cruises out of the fleet, you're going to save some money. but you're going to have a lot of deputies standing around in the office doing nothing. Um, well, then... During the day. I, I feel compelled to interject that the International Association of Chiefs of Police did a study. The MRI locally did a study for who? Rockingham County, that's the sheriff's office, just like we are. Every sheriff, every, all 10 Carroll County, I'm sorry, all 10 counties have take-home cruises. They've all answered to commissioners and to delegates as to why, what's the, it's all about money, right? So what's the, what's the rationale, why? It, and it, Tacoma, Washington did a huge national study about 10 years ago, and they've all discovered that it is more fiscally prudent to have a take-home cruiser than it is to do, than it, than it is to not, I'll put it simply. So, so the question was asked, are there savings? And the answer is yes, there are savings. There are savings in having take-home cruises as opposed to not. That's where your savings are, by taking home cruises. They last longer. But I think it should be noted. I, I haven't looked at, had a chance to read all these. Quite obviously, the people who are doing these studies, that's the result I'd expect them to get. Yeah. I mean, I know it's, you know. <laughs> Well, I guess we can so, say that about everything, every study is done. We can say that, and that's no, it's by who's doing the study that they get that producing the answer that I would expect. That I don't think I don't agree with that. MRI, when they did a study for Rockingham County, they weren't doing that study to say Rockingham County 
it makes sense. For, they were doing a study for Rockingham, the county. Mm -hmm. Say, what would make sense to the county? An MRI, an independent group, they said it would make sense to have take-home cruises. MRI isn't that independent. There you go. Thank <laughs> you very much. And I know that for a fact. Yeah. Yes. But your husband yeah. and, and the other... Uh, my the, husband's the never worked. Bailey, my my husband's they never worked. For, or they were independent. My they husband's work never worked for MRI, but they're not independent. They're not independent, Rich. So, so they, they have they have they're they're an independent company, but they have retired police officers and retired law enforcement working for them. That's the truth. I mean, I'm not despair. I mean, I'm not going to get an argument about MRI. Forget it. It's not even worth it. Madam Chairman, in just, in just going over this quickly, I mean, this isn't even a, a logical comparison. Miami-Dade County has thousands and thousands of people living in it. Roadwide County, or however you pronounce it, Florida. Same situation, that's Miami, and, uh, or just north of Miami. Galloway Township, New Jersey. East Peoria, Oklahoma City. Tacoma, Washington, Colorado Springs. Tacoma, Washington has 263 vehicles. And we're not talking about a, a rural, uh, this hasn't been done on a rural uh, area like ours. They're all cities and they all have different, you're gonna have more car accidents in a city because you're racing around. Um, you're gonna have more activity at night. Yes, this is good information, but it really doesn't apply to our county. I don't think. I, I hear you on that, some of that level, but I guess the ruralness also plays into the fact that plays we in have time much, wise, much and greater that's distance it. to cover as far as coming to get a cruiser. I mean, I'm almost 35 miles from Conway, right down to here, to come grab that cruiser if it was so to be. Daytona um, Beach, 340. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, you, you don't suppose Motorcycle Week or Race Week has any effect on what happens to their cars down there, do you? Um, I mean, you have, you know, you just gave an interesting example. Of course, you're up in Conway, and there are three of you up there, but you're the, the head sheriff. So I wouldn't expect you to come down here and get a vehicle. I would expect you to have, just as the chief would have, their vehicle. I wouldn't expect that. But you've got two other officers in Conway, and you have two cruisers there. If you get, if you kept one of the cruisers there, um, and you had a call out there, then they wouldn't drive all the way down here. I'm just saying, if you strategically kept your cruisers in certain areas, no one would have to drive all the way to Ossipee to pick up a cruiser. You have police departments everywhere that you could park a cruiser in. I mean, I'm, I'm just, well, I guess you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I'm not trying yeah. to make, you know, your life miserable by any means. Now you're putting the burden on another town to protect that vehicle. Um, well, possibly. seriously, I mean, well, if, if I parked a, a car at Moltenboro PD, I would, I can't imagine someone coming in and doing any damage to it right at the police department. I mean, that really, I mean, let's face it, that doesn't make sense. Not to be. That happened to my code enforcement car that was parked oh, at the Tuckerboro yeah. PD. Obviously, somebody was really not, ticked off at you. <laughs> no, it was, it was a police car at the time. Yeah. And again, I mean, the deputies in Conway, I mean, yes, I'm the sheriff. Uh, the lieutenant lives up there. He's one. He's the second one. And the other one's right now a canine unit, so that's a special vehicle. Um, so How many? All right, so you, right now you have people that are on call, right? You're saying... How often, how often does the person go out that's on call? Like, is it a frequent thing? Is people go? Are they going it's, out every single it's night? It's night and day. I mean, it, it could you could have a rash of on call items come up. Um, so without looking at it uh, under the gun, it, it's hard to say. But it, it's spotty, and then it, it could be very consistent, and then nothing. So can I follow up? Okay. Sure. So. Um, the people that you have on call, do you ever have to call, how often do you have to call other people in? Do you know, do those on-call people yep. are efficient? Because where I'm going with this is, if we had people on call, and the people on call took the cars, so we knew where the cars were as the on-call person, um, is that sufficient enough, or or are you, or is that not enough? Do, do, is your justification is everyone needs a car because you might have to be calling all these people 
to help out. Yes. Is that a realistic thing? Does it, that happen? It, it, it is realistic. I mean, I remember um, just on sheer transports um, when I was a sergeant. Uh, I had two IEAs overnight down to Concord. So I'm shuffling back for four hours doing transports. And as I'm leaving Concord the second time, a third one comes in. So now I said, okay, I'm not call out someone else. Um, so, and that's just one little instance on a transport issue. If you get a major accident or uh, burglary or home invasion type of thing, you're going to call out some troops um, to include any available uh, officers around the towns. Um, so it's, I can't answer that with the unknowns. I mean, anything's possible. Um, Most of the time, though, you have a major, a major, major catastrophe or anything that's huge in the county. Are you backup or are you? It depends where it is. Why does it depend where it is? Because we have five towns with no police departments. So state police wouldn't be wouldn't no. be first. No. Not so those of us that do pay for a police department are paying for those towns that choose not to, mm -hmm. and that's my point. That's what's wrong. Kind of like dispatch. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, that's <laughs> You can sign up. You can you can come if, to dispatch if you want. <laughs> Your town chooses not to. Oh, those towns choose not to have police. And you well, yeah, but we should put, yes, but we shouldn't be paying to provide police coverage for them, in my opinion. I, I'm not going to even go there today. <laughs> Just, yes. Uh, if I can um, focus on a different aspect of this. The concern that I have is about the this reserve vehicle. Or Now you're planning to have two of them? No. Okay. No. We would shuffle probably... If there is one of these two that is better than that one, we would shuffle it out and sell the one that's currently here. So we would only still have one reserve vehicle. How often do you use that A reserve? Lot. Um, either to do transports or part-time use, um, or if we have any major repairs, which we have had, then that obviously comes back into the rotation. It's, it's, you're not going to save a dime getting rid of that vehicle. Well, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm I obviously wouldn't, not going to put a lot of money into it. I, I wouldn't be getting rid of, of the vehicle. Yeah. I wouldn't be buying a new vehicle to replace an, another vehicle. Just put that into the fleet. Until Again, I mean, you're at a mileage that's probably at 120,000 miles. When does it become unsafe? When do you want to put your neck out on going pursuing a vehicle. Right. On our lovely roads. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, um, that vehicle's in its fifth year or its sixth year right now, that spare car. So for its purpose of a spare, it's money well, well worth it. Like I said, I think the county as a whole should have a unmarked, no cage vehicle for county purposes for people to go to training that aren't law enforcement because you're paying a lot of money for mileage and possibly you could put them in a vehicle you want. Something like a Prius. Whatever it be. We have, we have two extra cars at the jail. You can't drive a, a jailer's car or a jailer can't drive a sheriff's car well, with nothing on it. I mean, why aren't you guys working together? It depends if it's not in use for one. I'm talking about for this purpose of training. I mean, now they're putting blue lights on it. They would have to cover up the blue lights if they're not. Who training who? Well, I'm talking about anyone, nursing home or anyone, you know, going to, to go to training. And stuff like that. They get out of Congo. Yeah, after you've done the budget, there won't be any money to go yeah, to Congo. Yeah. So solve that problem. All right. You want well-trained people. But, you but I'll get back to my pet peeve again. <laughs> Which, 
if, and I've, I would like to bother because you and you were up, I asked about this because I would like to be able to, you know, if it's one eight hour shift a week, ask a sheriff's deputy to be in Bartlett or at least respond. And I, and I understand they don't have the manpower to be able to do that. Yet these five towns that don't have a police department, they're gone as soon as they get a call. And that's just not right. I'm sorry. And I, I don't have the answer for that, but it, it's wrong. And, um, but that's my, and I'll figure it out someday. <laughs> Actually, if, yeah. if I may, to that point, we had a discussion. I mean, it was just a, off the cuff discussion about what it would take to re you know Tuftenboro gave up their police department they came over here you'd hire them and Tuftenboro would have to pay you right is that how it would work well I mean it, it could work one of two ways I mean you could do something like the town of Albany does mm -hmm. or Brookfield or we would increase our budget to accommodate that right but the, what we talked town, about was you'd pick up their people, hire them, and then the town would... Well, only if the delegation allowed it to happen. Right. Let's face it. But I, I thought our conversation was about Tuftenboro having to yeah. cough up the money for that. Because the whole idea was that it was going to be cheaper, but you know, not free. Yeah. So that, that's to Gene's point, really. If, if somebody else decided they didn't want a police department, they'd have to kick in for it. And the twenty thousand dollars that Albany gives does that really cover every all the cost of having somebody there? It doesn't seem yes, like because, it does. Because what you have to realize is they're only paying for when he is there. Right. Four hours a, a Monday. Okay, Monday night. So he's going to work maybe um, five to nine. Okay, at night after his. Three o'clock shift. So he's there from five to nine. We're getting commercial pay for that, which the business office gets, you know, the money they need to process all the paperwork and all that. And the deputy's getting paid the detail rate, and um, there's money in that for their gas. So everything's getting covered, mm -hmm. and they only have a four hour window of coverage. After that, it's back to. Okay. We're on call for the. But you town still go if they call. Right. You still go. Right. If when and if we're available, yes. Mm. Which if we're not available, then the state police go. Or if the state police are closer, sometimes they get the call. Um, so yeah, it's between us and the state police to cover those five towns. I think they did a study. In, it was a Barnstead mm -hmm. that Craig went over and did a whole study for their PD. Mm -hmm. And they turned it down. They turned it down. Yeah. Townspeople, they do. Yeah. They wanted local control. Yeah. Hey. I'm sorry, Commissioner. <coughs> In all my years on the delegation, I've been working with Representative Chandler. I don't think the five towns. We had Madison come in, what, 10 years ago, Gene? And, and they wanted to get rid of theirs, and we gave them a quote on what it would cost, and they stuck with theirs. But I think that if they're using the sheriff for a police force, they ought to be paying something to it. Mm. My comment was on the automobiles when <clears throat> it seems to me there's always an automobile at some shop if I'm signing checks every week. <laughs> are, are your deputies um, sitting there while they do the work or are they dropping the car off? And, it and depends on the length of time. If it's just an oil change, a lot of them are sitting there. Um, well, we give them the car to take home. You mean they can't even drive down and drop it off and come back? We've got to pay them. Time and a half, or whatever it is, to sit there while they work on my car. Time that and doesn't half. make any sense. Probably on duty pay. Yeah. On duty pay. I mean, I, to me, I would think that that would be done off hours. And I do see some overnight chance of northern that. northern tire, so I know there are some deputies yeah. dropping them off. But I think they. Yeah, all I mean, if they're going to be there in any extended um, time, then they'll drop them off and take the spare. Or we'll schedule it around the duty. I have one more question. Go for it. I, I gotta find it. <laughs> Where I put my question next? I'm sorry. Oh, court bailiffs. We we show an expenditure of 116,000 and an income of something different. 109. 
Right. 109 for shouldn't that Shouldn't they do the same? No, because um, if you remember, do we do the county is paying $5 a right. day for the required hours for the bailiffs. We're paying? Yeah. Above what the state? $5. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we pay above what the state? Yes. Yes. Representative so Chandler and I were here when that whole thing happened, mm -hmm. and we got we got um, scammed. Right. It was it was it was sixty five dollars an hour a day, okay, and right. we and there was a bill before the legislature to raise it to eighty eighty or eighty five, and we voted to give to give the the bailiffs a ten dollar raise, I think it was, or a five dollar raise until that bill passed. The bill passed, and Sheriff Conley came in with his, with his uh, <clears throat> minutes and said, oh, well, you can see right here that <clears throat> that extra $5 is for $10 is supposed to be added on on top of what the delegation gave. Therefore, we ended up paying $5, I believe it is, per deputy per day. And it shouldn't be that way, Dominic, Sheriff. I, we I, were schmoozed on that. I kind of disagree with that, but... What are they getting um, paid per day they're now? They're getting then? paid, the state reimburses $80, 80. and the $5. And we're paying on top of that. Yes. Which dollars. was all we intended was to go. Yeah. Was to fill the gap until the bill passed. Right. And right now the state is paying uh, the union guys, their AOC people, $85. So that's why it's still the $5 on top of the 80 And I've recently learned that they just got a $3 raise. State AOC? State AOC may be making eighty-eight dollars. So, is that? Are there, did you say those are federal funds? No, state, state funds. Hmm. And that's Sorry, another yes. situation. They also it's per diem, which in Latin is per day. If they work overtime, they get time and a half, and it shouldn't happen. It should be eighty-five dollars a day if they go home in two hours, or if they stay ten. Now, the, there's a half-day wage. If they stay half day, there's an eight-hour wage. Talking. And then the time and a half isn't until the 20th minute, I think it is, if the court runs over 4 o'clock. Well, that's, that's my point, it's per diem. And they're not being paid per diem. They're being paid per diem for a while, exactly. and then over time on top of that. But so that extra $5 a day, that's in that line. Yes. yes. Any other questions, concerns? Conclusions? Oh, no, I don't have any conclusions. Obviously, yeah. I will have some. The only decision will be whether it's 5% you want cut or 10%. There you go. Mr. Chandler. That's it. Familiar with the routine. That's it. Yeah. So, is uh, that what you want me to say on Monday? <laughs> well, I'm just one person. I, and it's nothing against this department, because no, no. they're all departments. I yeah. will treat them all fairly. We, we simply, the taxpayers of this county simply cannot afford this much of an increase that this budget, this total budget, shows. Right. And nothing here, but in any more than any, anyone else. So, not singling out one department. We just need to. But I have to report on this everything. department. Well, that's what. <laughs> well, I'll give you my, that's my vote, that this has to be reduced. Well, but. then, you know what? Because this is what I was trying to get towards mm -hmm. if if that's the idea you know a, a five percent my idea i know but if if it's a if that's what the delegation comes up with a five percent i just think it it would make a lot of sense for the de your, your department every department to be proactive and thinking about if that comes down what are your priorities mm -hmm. and what is that five percent you know that would be an exercise if i was in charge of a department i would i would do with my team so that i would be prepared if it would happen, what my priority, so that I don't lose the important things. Because one of the dangers that you, that could happen as we go to the delegation, the delegation says we're going to cut this, 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 and it might be things that you don't want them to touch, that they're real important to you. So, I, I mean, that's what I would do. I would look to, you know what I'm saying? One of the things you really want to fight for. Well, and of course, who knows what's going to happen. With it. We don't know what the votes are going to be for. And what I've always proposed is what you're saying, only back to the commissioners, but they say they don't want it. I feel if we're going to make a cut of three, five, so whatever percent across the line, then the commissioners should, they should meet with their departments and decide where they want to do it, in my opinion. They have said no, they're done, and that's it. But in my opinion, so then Mr. Chandler, 
Same thing. You, we made our budget. Right. If you want to cut it, well, you're in retrospect, I would you're think you look. For I'm sure, it. retrospectively, you look back on it and realize the error of your ways. <laughs> so, but failing that, I would like to give the departments. If if the delegation represent rec says we should cut the sheriff's department X amount of dollars, I would much prefer them to at least like, take a look at. It. Now they can say no too. We're not. No, we're not going there. You guys do it. But I would prefer them to have a chance. To recommend yep. what they would like to do. That's all. Well, not, that's why right. the commissioners aren't going to do it. Then each department should. I think we should give them that chance. Now they, if they choose, they don't have to participate. And I wouldn't say I'm not going to say they're going to do it willingly. I understand that. I get that thought. You but know, be prepared. So. Okay. Yeah, so help me out here because. Representative Umberg is going to look right at me and say, mm -hmm. "What is your subcommittee recommendation?" and what is our subcommittee recommendation? It's not to cut the whole budget. Is it to cut the sheriff's budget 5%? Or are you saying we really want to cut the whole county budget by 5%? So that's really what I don't, have, I don't have a 5. I don't have a. Oh, I know. I'm just you saying. You wouldn't like the 5. You'd be after the 10. No, no. I don't have <laughs> any eight. number. <laughs> and I don't have any specific recommendations. So that's I, why I want to finish today Okay. to do that. But I would like to think. However, you I don't know how you want to do it, but on my, when you have to make that recommendation is that we would recommend this budget as in all the budgets, we need the delegation needs to take a look and make reductions. That's all, and then we'll have to figure out what the delegation wants to do. But, but are, are, is this subcommittee making a recommendation on a reduction in the sheriff dispatch budget specifically? I can't myself right now because well, I just got this other committee. information. So. I, well, is it fair to say everybody go back and look and then give me an email and I'll, because I'm going to type something up for myself to go by on Monday, um, you know, that we had a discussion about cruisers and does, is it the, is it the um, feeling of this subcommittee that cruisers line stays the way it is and they buy two new cruisers? I mean, that's where, you know, it, the salary, we, we really don't have any control over that at this point in time until you bring us some figures on salary. So this budget's going to go up. It's not going to go down. Yeah. Right? Um, and you'll have that. You'll, you'll ma email me that? It's or not you'll, going to it's, be earth shattering. It's, it's not. not. Okay. Well, great. That's good. I'm glad about that. I, I had a question I, I had forgotten. How, did we resolve the liability issue? The liability insurance was That's significantly higher than it was. I can, I can tell okay, you what Kathy Gary told me because I, I specifically asked her about that line because it was up $20,000 just for sheriff. That's a climax issue. And what she's trying to do is bring together the whole liability instead of bringing it out into departments because some, as she said, it just isn't coming out the way it should. It's expensive. Yeah, so she's looking at, um, I, I think, like the IT um, yeah, trying line, to trying, make trying to make it a, a one line instead of every department getting a piece of it. Because we're paying half the IT line, but we're not getting half the service. Right. right. Yeah, so I think that's so what So there's a cut right there do. we could make. Yeah. No, it, I, like Jean, uh, Representative Chandler suggested right off was, that IT line should be in the commission's budget. Period. Separate. Yeah, and I think that's what Kathy's trying to look at. I don't know if she's and I think said the anything to you. Liability but line should be the same thing in the commission's budget. That's an insurance for the whole county. Right. One and it's one payment. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Because if you look, it was seventy thousand out of this year's budget for some reason. Yeah. And then it looks like the business office has put back to the fifty thousand for next year's budget. You spent. You spent. Um, so uh, we were. It you says, were apportioned roughly seventy thousand five hundred yeah. last year, and budgeted fifty thousand this year, which is obviously doesn't make sense. Twenty less. Right. So, and that's and the where insurance going up. Why is that happening? It's, again, that's a number that is from the business office. I have right. no idea. I'm Hopefully sorry. I have, I'm sorry. I do have one more question. Sure. And, I was not here at the last meeting, mm -hmm. so I apologize for asking this, and it'll be my last one. Special deputy salary, uh, yeah, salary special deputies. What, what does that consist of? Because it's up About 15000 mm -hmm. That was for the... I'm sorry, I'm personally yeah. 
Uh, it was for the. Do you know what's the number on that? Oh, 08. Uh, okay. Increase. <laughs> well, special deputies is 09. Oh, okay, it's on the different page. I got it. Thank you. Okay. That was. You brought true. down from. There was a cut of overtime and an increase of the special deputy, the part time line, to offset that cut of overtime. Because sometimes it is easier to get a, a part time to work instead of a full time to work overtime uh, when needed. And it was also what was the increase in combination yeah, to, to bring out the two court deputies that do a lot of the transports into a separate salary line that is partially set off by compensation by the state. But overtime, that's a considerable increase too. No, shouldn't have. It was, it was decreased. Do you have the, t is it 201? $10,000 a decrease. From the original. The overtime is up 25%, 30%. If I'm reading it properly. Do I have the wrong one? Am I reading the wrong one? Well, my date on mine is 201 up in the corner. Right. Yeah, right. So it's, that's the one you should have. But um, there are some changes on that. Okay, the overtime should read 35,000, I believe. Right? I have 35, right. down from 40,000. Oh, okay. Right. But yeah. originally from 42. How can, how can yeah. both have the same yeah. sheet? No, because that, mine's written on it. That's what yeah, we, it change was changed at our last meeting. So that's why you, it, Kathy has those figures, but that's what was changed when we had our last meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so last year it was 40, So that one went from 40000 to thirty five. Right, I got that. But in relationship to the special deputies, you went down 5000 in in overtime and up fifteen right. in special deputies. So right. there's not really a well, down, balance there. Basically down 7000 from last year's adopted budget. From the for overtime. the special deputies. From overtime. Or for the overtime. And then but you went up. And the special deputies... But overtime is up five thousand dollars over what you actually spent. Right. right. That's the true right. indicator, in my opinion. And the special deputies is up fifteen thousand over what you actually spent. Because I wanted to put more money into the part time because we it's a it's tighter budget and it was um, we had to watch what we spent because two bailiffs or deputies, special deputies over at the court that also do some bailiff work, um, do most of the transports um, to the court from Concord. So they're basically, they're based on a 32 hour week. Those two guys fill that 32 hours between the two of them. And that basically comes to $30,000 for the year. So that left us with basically not much money to use part-time as I look to fill vacation time, sick time, um, duties on the road. So I wanted to separate the lines all together, but it's still included in that part-time with those two deputies. So basically, it was only fifteen thousand dollars to use part time as to actually do road work or fill in for vacation time, and some of that thirty thousand dollars is paid back by the state if they're doing a transport to the courthouse in that um, custody uh, sixty five dollar custody payback. Mr. Can the prisoner to pay? And and um, on line 002 grant salaries that went down five thousand dollars from our last meeting. Yeah, because that was that was your drug task force pull no. out. Yeah, well, that's what I have written down. Grant salary. Oh yes, yeah, so yeah. You had only you had only the actual was only three thousand, and the your no your request was ten, and we brought it back down to five. Right, and that is going to cover the um, state speed, right, the speed detail, grant, and, um, and some commercial, sobriety right. assistant right. checkpoint. Mm -hmm. right. So you've shown income. Yeah. 
You've brought the budget down by ten thousand dollars. Eleven thousand because there was a thousand um, online. <coughs> 017 education and conferences. We brought that down to five thousand dollars. 017, Madam Chair. Yes. No. Okay. No, that's the. Oh, 18. Okay. I hate the way this is. I have to look at the bottom and then on the top. So it's education and conference from six thousand to five thousand. Thank you. You're so it's the 018. Total reduction of eleven thousand. Eleven thousand from our last meeting. Okay. So on the income side, this grant. Funds should be five thousand dollars, not ten thousand seven fifty. On the um, income special details. No grant funds. The grant funds. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we changed that. Yeah, that's. I, I have just ten thousand seven fifty on the grant line for that's O nineteen, right? Yeah. 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 So that line should be. 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 So should be. So that line Again, five thousand in one place. Why isn't it five thousand in the other? Uh, it's gonna be the same both places. Yeah. 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 So the seven fifty's got to go. It would work out well if we could <laughs> ten. <7 laughs> well, it was ten seven fifty. Right. It should just read five thousand. Just five thousand. Okay. I mean, that's a wash, so it's not. So o nineteen, we're chopping to five thousand. And revenues. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> So, uh, if I may, yes. um, the <laughs> cringes every time I speak. Um, just so I understand, the the communications upgrade is off the table for this year. No, it's it's going to be a, you know, probably require a special meeting by you guys uh, when it does, to receive the grant money. If and okay. when we do get any money. And that'll again be a wash, basically. Now the, not the. the yes, thank you. Uh, 036 dispatch income. I have 2,500. Did that go down just to 2,500 instead of the 52,000 on revenue? Well, I have did you just get yes. the numbers backwards? Yeah. Did I? Uh, no, one's 25, the other's 52. Did they just turn them around? Yes. I don't know, but I, I have written down here Milton Fire, yeah. two thousand five hundred. Yeah. So that fifty two thousand five hundred is right. out because that was in the original communications proposal. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right. What was that supposed to be? Line O thirty six is two thousand five hundred yeah. instead of fifty two thousand five hundred. I have that, Madam Chairman. But you do. I'm just okay. trying to get. Originally, you said it with well, the fifty two was part of the right. the, the original yeah. grant. The original grant proposal, mm -hmm. as far as communications upgrades, okay, we were um, looking to see if we might receive fifty thousand dollars from OVMA if we did those upgrades. But at this point, it's all on waiting for that grant. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my original question when asked about the sheriff dispatch budget. Am I saying we took eleven thousand dollars off, and I can just say where, and that's it? Well, technically, you're not. We're not taking eleven thousand dollars off. Five thousand dollars is out of the revenue right. as well. So we're only really reducing the budget six. Six, or the six. expenditures by six thousand. Right. I'll make sure I look at it. I, I'm specific about that. Looking at my and what was it, what percentage was that of the, the whole budget? budget. <laughs> We're trying to get to Jean's five so that we don't have to deal with it. Yeah. Definitely not five. <laughs> I don't. I mean, a, a good portion of my increase was some insurance increases as far as family I, plan from single plan. And I have that written down. I'll yeah. certainly say yeah. that uh, for sure. And and retirement is up. I mean, those are yeah. you know things that we don't have any control over. 
and all those numbers are going to go up once the wages go up. Also, right, exactly. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, right. Well, when, I know lots of things go up, but you don't have any control over it, which means you have to. A little extra effort on those you can, uh, right, James? Yeah. You can <laughs> right. I don't fault you. I'm just. I mean, I, I did report to my the, the selectman in Moultonboro last Thursday just to give him an update on the county budget and just some things that were going on in Concord and um, told him, you know, that it wasn't final, that we hadn't received. And I wasn't just talking about your budget. I was talking about the whole county budget and gave them some figures. And, you know, I got a little, but um, I, you know, tried to reassure them that we hadn't finished, that we were still working on it. Because Moultonboro is going to pay 25 percent no matter what it is. So I feel I need to keep them for informed. It. I know you thank me for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thanks. Oh. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like us. Molly, you can afford it. That's the difference. Uh, well, you've got the income. Team, not, you don't want to go there. The <laughs> uh -huh. All right. So is that what I'm doing? Yeah. OK. Meeting's adjourned. Yes. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Alicia. All is Hi. Adjourned at 11.28. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jean, for coming down. And Cindy, no, I appreciate that. Those other questions answered in